This is the NFL on EA Sports as we join you from the so-called Space City, Houston, Texas. Today it's week three and we've got a good one in store as it'll be the Dreadnoughts of Toronto and the Houston Oilers. Two weeks have come and gone. It's off to week three and we're underway on EA Sports. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Start things off with a carry by Gibbs here. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pick up of eight. So you look at this situation and the relocation. It's worked other places. You've got the two teams in L.A. Until recently, we had two out of the Bay Area. Of course, the two New York teams. Now two teams calling Houston home. And we know that they do things big here in Texas. And if these fans here are any indication, this city is ready to support a second team. Here's a second and two now from the 33. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let it pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Out of the gun, they'll give to Gibbs. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. But you look at this defense. There are 32 teams in the NFL, and they're just better than 50% of them at defending the pass number 16 in the league. And you see the starting unit here, but really, you're going to see a lot of different personnel, a lot of different packages as they rotate in and out throughout the game. And a strong run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Second and nine. Now they'll change things up. Stroud will throw it. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. side handoff and a missed tackle there as he pushes forward for a gain of four. 
I think that one gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. Second and six. Here's Stroud. Targeting the out route, and he completes this to Metcalf. And out of bounds inside the 10, marking down at the 9. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. now is Stroud. And he's going to be dropped. Back at the 15-yard line. Credit that sack to Travis Jones. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. First down, a bit of a disaster. And now on second and goal, back even further. Meanwhile, Stroud's throw complete there to Moore. They give him a dozen on the pitch and catch, but now they're up against a third and goal. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it? In motion, the tight end. They'll try to run this one in. Yeah, this is going to depend on the spot, but I believe he might be a few inches short. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave him with some options here on fourth and inches. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with a football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. He couldn't get the ball away on fourth and goal. And on the opening drive of the ball game, the defense comes up with a goal line stand. A man who was a collegiate standout nearby in Austin, it's B. John Robinson. And from the four, they get it to the eight on a pickup of four. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six. We're scoreless after one. Second quarter now, Toronto in possession of the football as they are looking at a second down and six coming up. Richardson to throw off play action, sliding out of the pocket, and he'll just get rid of it. One thing you always worry about when he breaks the pocket is, is he going to take off with it? That time, the pressure was starting to close in. And he's just got to throw this one away. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Here's 
Here's Richardson to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. Give him 32 on the play. Hand off to Robinson out of the shotgun. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there, second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Back to throw. Here's Richardson rolling to his right. And bulldozing, fighting through. And he's got space. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 32-yard line. From the shotgun, Richardson. And this head straight to the sideline. I don't think they're going to let him get away with that. Nope, they won't. Here comes the flag. Yeah, he hadn't gotten far enough away from the pocket to throw that football away, and that draws the flag. Yeah, the old tackle box, right? Get outside of each tackle, and then you can go ahead and throw it away, and you're in good shape. But if you're back there in the pocket, you got to make sure of what you're doing. On second down, it's Richardson to throw it. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And it's caught. Touchdown. A big play there with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Dreadnoughts post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. There you go, Charles, his first touchdown pass of the new season. And he had a strong rookie year. So much more expected of him this one, as you might imagine. He threw that one with confidence and assuredness. And I noticed that the celebration a little bit more subdued than his first touchdown pass last year as a rookie. Yeah, he certainly is acting like he's done it before. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the...
Touchback. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. They've got some stuff to build on from that last drive because they moved the football CD and then they tried to go for it on fourth down, didn't convert, probably left a bitter taste in their mouths. I would say so, and I think that they go out in this series determined for that not to happen again. In fact, they don't even want to get to a fourth down opportunity. They just want to make sure they get it done within the parameters that they've set for themselves. Run their offense, get it into the end zone. Yeah, I think a little bit of determination and a dash of anger. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches have told me in the past. The biggest teaching point, get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense. And he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. The throwing again is Stroud. Oh, he tries to get it to Metcalf, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Asante Samuel Jr. The CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on-the-job training, so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, 
and turn it into positives moving forward. Touchdown! A great effort there with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Dreadnoughts are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. Stroud now on first and ten. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Moore, the man in motion. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Two minutes to play, first half. It's 14 to nothing. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now Stroud. Touchdown! DK Metcalf, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Oilers have cut it back within a score. Extra point by Butker is on target. And that'll make our score 14-7. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Richardson under pressure, and down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. Richardson looking to throw this. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and get the football right back because your friend, Old Momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here... And he can't escape, and down he goes. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. Back deep is D.J. Chark. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. Fielded just inside the 20. 
A pretty good punt there, but also a nice return of 12 yards. And they will take over first and 10. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And with just under a minute to go, they might try to think about mounting a drive here if they can and get in the end zone. And now off to the races, down the right side. Down to the 10. Touchdown, Houston. DJ Moore, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Oilers are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. Extra point by Butker is on target. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. First and ten. Here's Richardson with it. Under pressure, and down he goes. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. The tight end in motion right. Richardson looking to throw. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. 23 yards, the pickup there. First down, Richardson. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. And he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. You can easily see the logic. It's a tie game. They just wanted to press it a little bit right before the half, hoping to get one more score. Now, easy to second-guess the result, but now you have to think after that interception, just a field goal, and they're behind at the break. Yeah, I think at the half, the head coach just says, look, that's on me. I wanted to press it, but it's because I believe in you guys. First down, here's Stroud. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. That tremendous field position that they were given following the turnover, but they've still got work to do to get to field goal range, and the coverage we're seeing isn't going to make it easy. Here's second and ten. Stroud. And this throw incomplete. Well, the defender all over at that time, but it's going to lead to third down. Good defensive call right there because they had someone shadowing him along his entire route. And he was right there ready to provide a hit that prevents him from making another catch to his big start. Stroud on third down now. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on four. Stroud looking to throw. Oh, he tries to get it to Metcalf, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Greg Newsom. Pass the 20. And he's given his guys a 
shot from late points as they will take over in range for a field goal or maybe more. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Out of the gun, they give to Robinson. And they'll get him down right around the 16. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. A final shot before the half. Richardson. And he's got it. Touchdown. A great play there. In the final seconds of the first half. And the Dreadnoughts have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And the lead is now 21-14. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. play of the half. Stroud. Going to throw right side here. Complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. So we've hit intermission. It's halftime. This is the NFL. And it's a presentation of EA Sports. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The offense back out there at the line ready for their next drive. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half, Good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner. And yeah, they went to the tunnel with a lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Third and one, Richardson to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it. And that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion, and more importantly, force a quick punting situation. And how about this one now? In their own territory, a gutsy call. They're going to go for this on fourth and a yard. They'll run for it with Robinson. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. A big roll of the dice on fourth and one, but it pays off. They convert. At first glance, I actually wasn't sure that he got it, but he ended up getting it by about a full yard. He certainly did, but it took a little effort, didn't it? Took some nice push, a little crease inside, and some determined running to make sure that he got the first down. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield. They had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. 
That one ended up incomplete. Second and ten. In motion goes the tight end. Now Richardson. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown! A big play there. His third touchdown of the season all coming in this game. And the Dreadnoughts go up by two touchdowns. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And the lead now up to 14. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. Well, the opposition laid down the challenge and opening drive touchdown here to start the second half. And Charles, now you feel like this group needs to get an answer because this all of a sudden is a two-score game. Yeah, you're right about that. What was a small, manageable spread to overcome? A little bit more daunting now. I think you're exactly right. Pressure is on because you don't want them getting the ball back with a chance to really extend this lead out. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. 60 Bison, 60 Bison. Keep it rolling, fella. 60 Maverick, 60 Maverick. And Stroud now to throw. He gets this out wide to Gibbs. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths. The and they get to Stroud. Nowhere to go, and he goes down. It'll be a loss of 10, and it'll bring up second. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Stroud's throw here into the hands of Moore. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. Stroud sets up the play action. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson with a pick. And he'll take it across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. Boy, so another interception, CD. And it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now... His head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. He's airing it out for Williams. And it's caught. Touchdown. Jamison Williams, 48 yards. And the Dreadnoughts have moved out in front by three touchdowns. And his kick is good, and flags fly as well. Some frustration showing through right now. This is going to be a roughing call. And they'll accept that penalty. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. Travis Jones picks up his second sack of the afternoon. 
17. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one, weren't able to do so. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And this one is incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. More the motion man. Fourth down, here's Stroud. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Hey, nothing to see here, just your standard fourth down gain of 28 yards. And the drive keeps going. And that's a big pickup of a first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense, they can't get the stop here. Eluding the pressure right. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Well, Charles, sometimes we talk about the lengths officials sometimes go to to protect star quarterbacks, but that one, that was tough to argue against. Yeah, and I'm sure that everyone's going to say, hey, we're going to administer the penalty the same way for all quarterbacks. But when it's a star back there, even more so are they going to be diligent about throwing the flag. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there, freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. A good passing down here. They send three receivers to the right of the formation on second down. Stroud working out of the gun. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. Oh, and one of the linebackers has got it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, if these guys wanted to get back in this game, they needed an almost perfect second half and down three scores. A lost fumble here certainly doesn't fit into that plan. That reminds me of my plan in college to get an A on the papers I turned in, but that didn't work. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Tyreek Stevenson picks it off. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Back to throw, here's Stroud. Setting up the screen, this is Gibbs. A nice little screen, they get six on first down. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, backdoored him, and that time worked well for a solid game. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Stroud, he's going to audible to something else. Back to throw here. And got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Houston. DJ Moore, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Oilers are able to get a score back in the final stages of this third quarter. Extra point by Butker is on target. And the lead will be cut down to 14. the 
touchdown. Here's Butker on to kick it away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. Their lead down from 21 to 14, but still sitting at a great spot. Up two scores here in the third quarter. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Robinson up the middle. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now a second and six. Richardson to throw off play action. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. It hasn't been the cleanest game for him, but there was a sign of improvement as he looks towards the next one. Nice bit of scrambling to move the sticks, and even more importantly, he didn't risk adding another interception to his ledger. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. They go play action with Richardson. Can't get away, and he's taken down. Javon Kinlaw able to drop him for a loss of two, and that will bring up fourth down. Well, it's been a little bit of feast or famine because he's thrown for decent yardage, and obviously they've got the lead, Charles, but now he's been sacked four times. And what I'm focusing on is his toughness in the pocket because you mentioned the feast or famine part. He's played well in between being dumped on his back, but every time he's had a chance to throw the football, he's been impressive. Well, Charles, the NFL record is 66 yards. That was five shy of that, but only a handful of guys have ever connected from 61 or deeper, and he can add his name to the list. Yeah, more and more guys are trying it. That doesn't mean the success rate has gone up. That is a long kick. Guaranteed, when he turns on his phone after the game, a ton of congratulatory texts will be awaiting him. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And, Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things. He's got a man complete. A huge play there for Houston. 45 yards. Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage, and you bring your safeties back, they can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out and to that end a nice pass play there to push things downfield yeah and we know in this league a loss is a loss and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or boy something that feels a little bit cheap but they trim that lead down to just two scores that's still a benefit to this squad let's go now 
The six yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Quick throw by Stroud, complete out wide. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Third and goal, Stroud. Now he's flushed out right. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. A five-yard touchdown. And the Oilers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Extra point by Butker is on target. And the lead is trimmed down to ten. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And it looks like this one won't work out. Hands team able to secure the football. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. From the 48-yard line, here's second down and seven. Play action. Now Richardson. Going for the deep ball. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. And touchdown. A great effort there. 52 yards. And the Dreadnoughts look like they're about to put an end to their two-game losing streak as they add on to their lead. Carlson on for the PAT. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Stroud. Over the middle complete. It's Gibbs. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now Stroud. And his throw is incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him. And after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. Stroud will look to throw once more. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Stroud to throw it. 
Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. A shotgun snap to Stroud. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Gibbs. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Again, it's Stroud. And he fires one incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. On third and short, they'll try option left. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. C.J. Stroud scoring on the keeper from six yards out. And the Oilers get a bit closer. Extra point by Butker is on target. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And solid field position here to start as they get this out to the 40-yard line. Now that's the kind of return you're looking for. To get to that spot on the field, that allows you to do a lot of things on offense. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And three timeouts remaining here defensively, but really not much reason to use them at this point as this one is all but over. If they use the timeouts here, it's... Oh, he's intercepted again. It's Richardson's third of the game. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. Intercepted. They'll take over first and 10 at the 28-yard line. Here's first and 10. Stroud wants to change it up with an audible. Flush to his right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. Here's Stroud. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Now another timeout called for by the offense. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Here's first down. Stroud to throw it. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Now the question is obvious. Do you try to kick the field goal right here, knowing that you need two scores? I would be thinking about if I were on that sideline. Get the field goal now, try and get the touchdown later. 70 Rangers, 70 Rangers. Drop 50, drop 50. 18, five years. Now Stroud. This is caught. And he is into the end zone for the touchdown. So they still need a miracle with the clock where it's at, but they get one piece to the puzzle done. Still have hope. Coming from where they were, they knew this was going to be tough, but they got the touchdown. Now they need the miracle, the onside kick, and a little extra. Yeah, and you have to get the onside kick and not have the ball bounce around a lot and eat up time. You want to be able to grab it, possess it, and get your offense out there for what you just termed a miracle, miracle. last chance. Stroud. And unable to connect. They don't get the two-point conversion here. And no, they can't connect on the pass. So that gets the clock down to 11. Time for probably two more plays. Got to go quickly, though. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. 
And that should just about put a capper on this one. And that's why you have your hand seam out there on the field. Those are the best guys ready to make that play. And let's face it, it was executed well. It wasn't a bad kick. It wasn't anything like that. Just that the normal outcome actually came to play. Analytics would tell you it's a very low possibility of getting the ball for the team kicking it in an onside kick situation. You're all about the numbers, aren't all you? All about the numbers, baby. It's a new game now. They don't lie. They've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Charles, normally when you see a group score this many points, it's a complete blowout. But instead, they needed every single one of those in this close, high-scoring affair. And hey Brandon, I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to one possession game at the end, 